Today we'll be raising the dead and painting a bit of an older miniature. Hello and welcome to another episode of Blaster Kate of Painting. Today we're going to be painting the Necromancer from Games Workshop. This is an older miniature. It came out when a Warhammer Fantasy was still around before it turned into the uh, not a game and then old world game again. So he originally came on a square base, but I have always loved this miniature and I finally just bought one and painted it. So let's do that together. So first thing we'll do is give him a spray of black and then white from above. It's a heavy Xenothal on this guy. We're going to start with some grim black and this is going to go over all the parts of the cloak that are supposed to be black so i checked the reference material on gamesworkshop.com or whatever that website is and looked at everything i could to try to get the colors close to the actual studio colors um you can be the judge of if i did that or not but we're starting with this then we're going to hop over to some murder scene and this is going all over the rest of the cloak so all the parts of the cloak that are going to have a sort of reddish or dark red like maroon sort of tint to it that's what we're doing for all this next we're going to take some goddess glow and this is going all over his skin so the idea for this paint scheme is i'm putting on colors that are a lot darker than what they're going to end up being so Basically, uh, the normal way of painting that I learned was base color, wash, and then you highlight up. So if I start with much darker speed paint colors, hopefully that will work. And then we're going to take some fire drake, and this is going all over that frill he has around his neck. Then we're going to take some snake bite leather here, and this is going all over any of the wood he has. So um, the staff that he's holding, and also we're gonna put it on the uh, cover of the book that he has tucked under his uh, cloak. I think out of all the skills in like the fantasy realms, like all the magic, like, oh, I can control lightning, or I, uh, you know, I can do weather stuff. I think necromancy is the most useful because like, you could just be a farmer that also is a necromancer and be like, I don't have to do any of the farming. I'll just raise the dead to go out there and plow the fields. And then when I'm done with them, I will have them lay in the fields because it's fertilizer. <laughs> it's morbid, but it's, it's, uh, it's a true thing about necromantic farming. Then we're going to take some bony matter here and we're just going to put this on all of these skulls and also on the pages of his uh, book. Now we're going to take some neutral gray and I'm going to start mixing that into my grim black and I'm going to start highlighting up all the black that I did. So we just take our time and go through and just bring up the color. And as I get finished each layer, I'm going to go back, add more neutral gray and start highlighting up even more. So I'm leaving all the grim black in the recesses and going through slowly adding in that neutral gray and bringing up all the black. And this is kind of a new thing I haven't done. I haven't added a lot of opaque colors to the speed paints. So this is kind of an experiment of seeing if this will work. And then in here we've added an even more neutral gray and now we're doing our final lightest highlight up on all of this. Now we're taking our murder scene and we're adding in mayhem red and we're starting to do the same thing we just did with the black. So we're going through and just getting all our raised areas, leaving the murder scene in the recesses and just bringing up all of our colors. And here we add a little bit more uh, mayhem red in there, still working and bringing up everything. Now with that mix, we're gonna start adding in some Bal Crimson and really start bringing out the red in this color. So um, at this point, we're very much working in very small areas, uh, leaving those colors that we already did and just bringing up that red. 
and continuing to add more bow crimson and just slowly changing everything so um this is this is uh, like i said before a new way for me adding those opaque colors to the speed paints is really a different way of painting and then just a final highlight up by adding in more of that bow red and then we're pretty much done once we finish this step we're done with that red color Next, we're going to take some Goddess Glow and we're adding in some Salmon. We're doing the same thing that we've just been doing, but now we're doing it with the skin. And the speed paints thin out the opaque colors that we're using, so we don't have to add really too much water to them. And it actually makes them blend into the colors below a little bit better. Then, we're just going to take some Pale Flesh and add that into our mix that we have and now we're really cooking up a, a like a, a highlight here so same thing we've been doing we're just slowly bringing up each layer Then we're grabbing some Grave Lord Grey, and this is just going to go all over his hair. So he's got some wispy hair there, and a bit of a bit of hair from under his chin. It's going right on there. We're going to take our bony matter and add in some bone white, and now we're highlighting up all the skulls. So same process that we've been doing. We're just highlighting up all those raised areas. And we're going for the raised areas, so we're staying away from the darker areas. We had our zenithal. We're just kind of layering up these skulls. Taking some bronze flesh tone and then some elf skin stone. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some really streaky sort of highlights with the bronze flesh tone. And then after that, we're gonna do some really streaky highlights with the elf skin tone. So these aren't mixing with any speed paints. We're just kind of slowly bringing it up with just really thin little lines. And finally, we take some pale flesh and do some final little streaky highlights on there. Then we're going to take a little bit of tan here and we're just going to highlight up just those sort of spines that are in between that web flesh. Next, we're taking some scrofulous brown and some snake bite leather. I don't know how to say that, scrofulous brown, but whatever. And we're going to start adding that in and bringing up all the wood that we did. Then we're taking some flat brown and we're just going to put this on the book cover that he has. And we're gonna take some mummified grime here now this is gonna go all over the straps and little bags that are hanging off the skulls and and the ropes that are holding them onto the wood then we have some enchanted steel and some glittering loot the glittering loot's gonna go on the handle of the dagger he has down here and the enchanted steel is gonna go on the blade We're going to take some flesh wash, some speed paint medium, and some berserker blood shade. And this is going to be a glaze that we're just going to layer over all the skin. Then we're going to take some speed paint medium and some black templar here. And we're going to thin that out really good and do a glaze over all the black that we did. Then we're taking some livery green and we're just going to dot in his eyes. We will paint the base after this, and this guy is done. And I am really happy with how he turned out. This was such a fun miniature to paint, and one that I've wanted to do for a while. Uh, really, really happy with how this worked. 
So what do you guys think? Are there any older miniatures that you're still interested in painting? I know Games Workshop has a couple that I would love to get. Um, they have the rat ogres that were in the Island of Blood box that they never released separately that I think were the best rat ogres they've done because the ones that they have are terrible. But there are a couple miniatures here and there that I would love to get a hold of. Um, the White King, which I actually have and I do plan on painting sometime soon. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? Are there any of the older miniatures that you're interested in? Normally, I'm not as interested in the older stuff, but this isn't that old. Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff, and you guys have a great day. I love this miniature. I love the sculpt. I love the, the skull he's holding. But I gotta tell you, that staff looks like it would be really heavy. <laughs> like, what? what is that? Mahogany? Oak? It looks crazy heavy to be walking around with.